Today we're going to make this super cute and fun, easy to make journal. We're gonna make it super easy by using some nice shortcuts. Hello everyone, it's Maddie Azar with Spectrum Art Creations. And today we're gonna to be using this amazing die set. It's got great features and elements, which is going to make us making a journal a snap all the links for all of the products that I will be using, I will be sharing down in the description box. And also I am going to be sharing some shortcuts and some ideas along the way. But as you can tell, this has got a lot of pieces. So first I'm going to pull it apart with you so that you guys can see how we do that and the elements uh, that are included. And then I'm gonna dissect one by one what the pieces are and what they do. So you start getting uh, an idea. Plus, of course, a lot of these pieces are interchangeable. So you'll be able to do even more than what I am just gonna teach you really quickly today. I'm just gonna scratch the surface. You have two options. You can either pull it apart the way you've seen me do, just by twisting it, just be gentle, right? Or you can use uh, little cutters and just snip them off as well. Either way works just fine. You don't need any special tools, but just remember if you're gonna do the twisting motion, which is what I'm doing here, just take your time. Don't try and just snap it off in one shot and then bend your die. Just take your time and go back and forth. If you do happen to bend your die, remember you're going to be running it through your die cutting machine, which is essentially going to reflatten it anyway. But once again, we don't wanna damage our dies. We can just take our time. This is going to be your first element, your first piece. This is going to be your base. It is the largest piece, so it's very easy to spot. Next, we're going to have the pages or cover. You could cut out your pages out using this piece right here, or you could also use it as a cover mat. Next, the next two pieces, we're going to have two of them. One's gonna be slightly smaller than the other. One will have a straight edge and the other one will have a stitch edge, as you can see here. They nestle inside of each other and you can use them to make panels or to cut out decorative pages as well, either for front covers, inside covers, inside pockets, or like I said, decorating your pages. The next piece is going to be the flap mat. So this is going to be a decorative mat and reinforcer for our flap. Then we're gonna look at three different signature hole dies. So these are for the signatures, meaning your pages, you're gonna have three different ones. One's going to be a double, and that's going to cut out the one on the main base, which is gonna give you your two signatures. One's gonna be a single one, and that's going to be for your pages themselves. And then last, you have a half of one, which is like for mini pages, super cute. I love the concept of that. And you will notice that the holes will line up too. So see, if you wanted to cut something smaller, you can add some smaller pages to add some interest, but those holes will line up either at the top or the bottom. Next, we have the decorative borders. So these are just decorative pieces. Uh, you have some really fun ones here, including the stitched one, which we will talk a little bit more here uh, in a bit. And you have your accordion pouch. Uh, there are two different sizes. There is a bigger one and there is a smaller one. And we are not going to be working with that today for this project, but we are going to talk about it a little bit more later on. You also have a decorative rectangle, which could be uh, for a plate or perhaps a window if you wanted to cut a window. You could also use it for belly bands. So you could create all kinds of fun decorative uh, plates and, and elements with that as well. Again, like I mentioned, a lot of this is 
very interchangeable. You can do all kinds of interactive things with them. So it's just a matter of, um, I'm gonna show you today the very basic journal, and then you can start playing around with your pieces and adding extra elements here and there. Then we have the mini tag and the mat for that mini tag. So that'll nestle right on there and give us a cute little decorative piece. The next piece is a bulldog clip. Imagine that being cut out of metallic paper. It would look adorable. And then we have a double mini tab as well. So again, super fun to add to your pages. And then we have two different size circles. One is going to be for our closure. So this one, the bigger one, is going to be for the closure. So we are going to be putting one there as well as one in the center panel. Now again, it all depends on the look you're going for because you might want a different closure. But for the intent of the video, we're going to follow along and use that as a closure. Then we have a smaller little circle and that one is super tiny. That one can either be a whole reinforcer it could also be, uh, so see, you could use like on the clip, you could use it on the mini tag. You can even use it um, along your signature uh, as well if you need to reinforce. I'm going to be using uh, Chow Bella, which is not a super, super heavy paper, but it's also not light, so it won't need any. But if you are needing to reinforce, this is another great one to use. However, I'm going to be using it as a spacer today and in order not to lose any of my goodies, <laughs> I am going to be using my metallic bowl, which is fabulous for being able to keep all of your pieces. I'm also using my uh, magnetic spellbinder wand, excuse me, super easy to pick up stuff and then all you do is push the button and it releases your pieces. So again, you just pick up and then push your button and release. Isn't that the greatest? I know it is for me because obviously I have a hard time picking up uh, little things or if maybe you need to um, use some ink on your dye or anything like that, this is the best way to pick them up. Uh, and then of course your best way to keep them while you're working on your project in the bowl because then you won't lose any of your pieces. Yes, I have been known to lose one or two dyes. <laughs> They're tiny sometimes, and then I can't find them. So again, all of the links for all of the products that I'm showing you today are going to be down below, and I highly do recommend these tools if you are a die cutter. We're going to look at our paper line next. The paper line that I've chosen for this project is Blooming by Ciao Bella, which is a company out of Italy that we import. Uh, gorgeous line, Blooming. It is just beautiful, soft pastels, uh, a lot of watercolor elements, uh, florals, butterflies, ears, clocks, birdies, um, watering cans, just super fun, lots of great elements for spring. So this is a really nice line to use this time of the year for spring. And of course, it's got journaling cards. If It's got also a background set. Um, I love the violin as well, which of course I ended up using in the front cover of my project. But we also have the 12 by 12 um, patterns pad, which is going to feature a lot of other different great elements that are not found in the main pad. Lots of great fussy cutting elements as well. So you have all kinds of tags and bookmarks and yes, just lots of great belly bins. And of course, we also have the eight by eight. In addition to these, we also have rice papers uh, and other um, parts of this line. So do feel free to check out the store if you'd like uh, this line or any of it. Oh, I just love the butterflies with the paint drips and just, you know, splatters. Just great. A wonderful, wonderful line for sure. I was very excited to use it. Can you tell? Yeah, I was. So we'll get to see it a little bit more um, up close, but you won't need a whole lot of this, believe it or not. Um, making this journal does not require a whole lot of paper. With our decorative pieces cut out, assembly is going to be a snap. So the hardest part sometimes I find is A, choosing a paper line because there's so many beautiful ones out there. 
and then to choosing what panels could go where or what elements or what you know papers to use where but with this line it was quite simple because it's pretty much all interchangeable uh, very easy to use so it didn't really matter I could have cut out anything out of any one of the pads uh, or excuse me pages and it would have looked great so I'm just gonna kind of show you what I've done here but I am gonna come back and we're gonna talk about two of the metal die cutting pieces specifically because I think those we need to talk about a little bit more in depth So this is the first piece that I want to focus on a little bit more in depth. This one cuts out a stitched, but it does not cut all the way out. As you can see, I purposely left it. It kind of sits there, but you can snip it on either side and then just use it as a decorative piece, which is what I'm going to be doing. But I wanted to run some ideas by you as well, because I don't want you to think it's faulty if it doesn't completely cut it out. There's a couple of ways that you could use this, and I'm sure that there are more. One of the ones that I thought was using this to wrap around the front of the journal and having this become the actual closure for the front. So almost like this belly band where this will slide in, the flap will slide in, and that will become your closure. Of course, you would not be cutting it out of paper. You would be using something a little bit sturdier. The second choice would be to glue it to the spine and use it as a handle as well. Once again, not paper, but something maybe like leather or pleather, something to that extent. So those, that was an interesting piece. I love to see what creative ideas you guys come up with. Those are just my two that I thought of right off the bat. Okay, now the other two pieces I want to talk about are these two kind of um, odd looking pieces. These are actually for an accordion uh, option where we can make a different type of a journal slash clutch with this line. You have a bigger one and you have a smaller one, so they're different sizes and you would stack them out and they would fan out. I am not going to be working with this today, but if you are interested in that tutorial, do let me know in the comments and I will be more than happy to do a tutorial using those pieces as well. Okay, so with all of that done, we are now going to start thinking about our signatures. And the first thing we need to do is, of course, to get our holes into the main piece, which is going to be our cover. To do that, very simply, we are going to not even measure. We're just going to eyeball it because I promise you this was going to be a super quick journal, and it really is. But we're going to grab our two mats and then we're simply going to grab the double hole and we are going to put that on there. We're gonna eyeball it, just basically look to make sure we have enough of a border all the way around so that it all looks centered. And then we're going to use some washi tape to hold that in place. Don't ask me why, but I actually adhered my washi onto the table and set up the paper. So don't do what Maddie did. <laughs> do it the right way the first time. Okay, so we've got our double now in place. The single is going to be for our pages. And so that's going to go right in the center. You can actually fold your pages right down the middle 
if that helps you to be able to create the placement for that and you can of course die cut a few of these at a time i am not going to worry about die cutting my um, all of my pages i'm just going to worry about cutting the covers and then of course we've got the little single one which we're going to make some really cutie patooties with our leftovers so we've got our center hole done for the signatures you'll notice that it also provides you with score lines which is really nice so that way you have not only your holes lined up but your scoring as well now the single one I used of course as I mentioned on just the covers not necessarily the tea dye papers that I'm going to be using those will perfectly line up. Again, there is no measuring, no second guessing. It's all very simple. I left this one on here for you to see that one of the things that I do as a tip for you guys is I distress where my folds are and that helps me to place my die in the right place because I'm able to see through the holes that distress line. See that? I can see the inked line and that helps me to place it now i've done some at the top and some at the bottom so you'll notice that some of them i have uh, used the die closer to the bottom edge some i've done with the top two holes instead of the bottom two holes so again some are going to be lined up at the top some are going to be lined up at the bottom i've done all kinds of different sizes so this is another great way to use your scraps and still be able to put either things in you know the top the bottom just little elements that'll flip here and there and add interest to your journal as well next i'm going to round off some of these corners as well as distress or ink up some of my edges of course this step is completely optional Now, some of my pieces I am going to be reinforcing. So for example, the circles, the large circles for our closure, I am going to be making sets of four. So I'm going to glue four of the circles together and I'm going to need two of those sets. The same thing I'm going to be doing with the mini tag. I'm going to be reinforcing it in the back with another piece of solid cardstock. Again, this is just to kind of reinforce that paper that might be on that mid to lighter side. Now the mini circles are going to be my spacers. So I'm going to create stacks of three. So I'm gonna stack three of them together. You can even do four. Uh, and then we're going to need two of these sets. So you'll need to cut out between six and eight of the mini little circles. Once again, I am not going to be measuring this out. I am simply going to be eyeballing it. That flap on the inside is going to hide our brad prongs once we insert our brads. So, it's super important to use that if you're going to be having brads in your closures. So the first set of these that I'm going to glue down is more as a base or a for aesthetic value. So I am going to simply glue that all the way down. I have forgotten to reinforce this one. So I'm adding one more piece of reinforcement. And then again, I'm just kind of eyeballing as to where it is going to need to be easiest thing to do of course is to get yourself a pencil pen or a marker and then simply mark that hole so that it's not moving around on you and that will prevent any kind of a mishap as well Next, we're going to add the spacers. 
So for the spacers, once again, we have tripled or quadrupled them because we need to have exactly that, a space in between the bottom and the top circle as well as the brad where our string closure is going to wrap around. So I'm simply stacking a few of these together. Three or four would be great depending on how thick your twine or if you're using something like a ribbon closure, that's going to dictate how many of those spacers you are going to need. I am using a light um, twine or thread, so I am simply going to use three to four. spacers done we are going to insert our brads and the prongs are going to be on the back but no worries because we're going to cover those as well Time to cover the prongs on our back flap. Now my flap cover now is too big just because where I decided to fold, I decided to give my uh, journal plenty of room to grow so I did not uh, fold at the original crease line. I, I Again, I made mine a little bit wider, but no biggie. All we do is take that over to our cutter or use your scissors and trim it down to the size of the flap that you need. You won't need to adjust the top. Obviously, that's the decorative cut. All you'll need to do is adjust the bottom, which is the straight side. And to cover the other side of uh, prongs from the brads, we're going to find the two biggest uh, panels, which are the ones with the straight edge. Those will go in first, and then we have the decorative panels that will go right on top of those. Those are the ones with the faux stitch edging. Next, we're gonna find our signatures. And again, you know, I'm just using some tea dye paper, a decorative panel, and then some smaller ones just to kind of show you uh, how you could use different papers. But look through your stash. You might have some great papers that you wanna use, uh, some vellum, some onion skin, uh, maybe some uh, decorative um, rice papers that you've put on plate. So yeah, you could do so many different things, obviously when filling your signatures, including maybe some magazine pages or some amazing photos that you might have. But I am just going to quickly use some tea dyed paper, some more from the paper line collection in different sizes. Some are going to be, as I had mentioned, up at the top, the smaller ones, the, the half panels are gonna be up towards the top. Some are gonna be towards the bottom just to give it that added uh, interest as we flip through. But you have so many possibilities, wider, skinnier, uh, taller, shorter. You can do all kinds of fun paper insertions. Now, as I had mentioned to you, I am not going to be using my die to cut the holes uh, for the signatures of my pages, the tea dye pages, that is. What I'm going to do is simply use my papers, which my covers, which I did use the die on to align the holes for punching out, just using my craft pick, I'm gonna punch out the holes on my tea dye papers using the guides, the holes from the front covers. Uh, so that's another way of doing it. If you're not adding a whole lot of paper uh, and it's something that you could uh, punch through with your pick or maybe an awl, that's probably uh, a great way of just not having to die cut, you know, stacks of paper using your die. All I'm doing is clipping it and then I'm going to be attaching, of course, I'm sorry, not attaching, but I'm going to be um, using a needle and thread to bind those signatures to the front cover all at once. So it's gonna be a one-shot deal. I'm gonna be going through them with the needle and thread all the way through the front cover and then just knotting them up. So that's the process that you're going to see here next.
Okay, and with my papers all lined up, I am ready to bring out the needle and thread. Now, I am using a special thread. It is not upholstery thread. It is actually, um, let me think of what it's called. It's used for boats. So it's used for like um, upholstery or sails on boats. So it is pretty um, strong. It's a very strong um, thread, which is meant to uphold even to the elements such as sun and salt water. So it's pretty tough thread, kind of overkill for this little journal, but um, it's what I usually use in my journals uh, so that's what i'm using here as well so i know that this is going to be there for a long time however it is not going to um, use a lot of bulk or create a lot of bulk in my signatures or in my papers or in my journal thus allowing me for more room to be able to add you know other elements that i want to add later on so as it gets thicker it gets chunkier it gets um, you know, all kinds of swatches and photos and uh, little things that I want to add here and there. Um, it'll be able to, to grow along with that. And yet my signatures will hold probably till the end of time <laughs> because this is not going to be exposed to the elements. So it's if you can find that thread, I, I happen to find it here because of course I live in Florida and I live right by the water. So because of that, we have a lot of uh, boats out here. We have a lot of um, water uh, equipment, jet skis and all that. And uh, the folks around here, of course, you know, do repairs. So I was able to find this thread out there. If you're able to find this kind of thread, it is definitely worth it. Because like I mentioned, you're not going to have a lot of um, issues working with it. It's, it's very silky and smooth and uh, it's not bulky, but it will hold and create a great, um, of course, resist for anything that you want to, you know, when you're flipping your pages and all that, you're not going to have a whole lot of bulk and you're not going to have a lot of issues later on. Now, a word of caution as I was putting these together. Number one, make sure that you are looking at when you're sewing it through, when you're putting your needle through, that you are not missing any of your pages, especially because we have the smaller elements, right? Some lined up at the top, some lined up at the bottom, those, let's call them half pages. Because of that, you could potentially miss one and then you'll be done with your signature and have to redo it again because you missed a hole. So make sure you're looking at that. The other word of caution is, and you see me doing it right there, is make sure that your pages are facing the right way, especially if you've also used some decorations on your pages, such as rub-ons or, you know, any other cute elements, a stamp maybe that you've put on there. But if your paper has an orientation, be very careful that you are not sewing your pages upside down. I've done that. I've done that more than once. I've done it more than twice. I've done it more than three times. So, and then I just have to start over again. So yeah, just kind of keep keep that in mind when you are looking at your papers as you're sewing your signatures in. And next we're going to add our tabs. Now, in my case, I'm just adding randomly. Of course, you could choose to do, you know, depending on what your theme or what your journal's going to be for maybe uh, a month, uh, you know, maybe January through March, etc. You could choose to do 12 months. You could choose to do the alphabet. You could maybe choose to do ideas, uh, you know, such as, you know, if you're decorating your house, maybe this tab will be for the bathroom and this will be for your kitchen and you can add your swatches and your photographs of ideas and, um, you know, all kinds of notes. So depending on what it is that you're going for, of course, your tabs will correlate with that. But in my case, all I'm simply doing is adding our cute little tabs just randomly here and there, just giving me at least four sections. Now, first I did the top, then I did the bottom. And then that gives me a guide as to how to space the two in between. I'm only using four. 
but the same concept will work if you're using 12. You start with the top tab, you stop with the start with the bottom, and then you do everything in between in order to space them out accordingly. So now we're all done with the covers, we're all done with our closures, we're all done with our signatures, we've even added tabs and interesting pages, we're just flying through. Next, all we need to worry about is adding a little bit of those decorations, right, just because they are fun. I'm going to be using my sticky dots. If you're not familiar with sticky dots, they are amazing, they're the best, especially for anything um, intricate lacy, filigree, uh, you know, little tiny pieces. Sticky dots are sheets that have, I don't know, a gajillion. There you go. There's a number. <laughs> I don't know how many hundreds, thousands of microscopic little glue dots. Okay. And they're just full sheets. And all you do is you lay down, as you see me doing here, your element, uh, whatever it is, whether it's an image, whether it's, um, you know, anything, anything that you want to glue down. And they're pretty strong little dots. Uh, as you can see, I'm having to lift uh, using a tool, but you do it gently, of course, not to tear your paper. And now it's got all these microscopic little glue dots all over it. And no need to add glue, get all messy, get glue all over your fingers, make a mess all over your desk or your work area. Yeah. It's the best. It is so nice to use. And the neat thing about them is they are essentially reusable because you could just keep using it and using it and using it until it no longer has any adhesive, which I haven't used a sheet yet, not one uh, fully. Um, so yeah, and you get a pack of, I don't remember if it's eight, 10, 12 sheets, maybe six, but there's plenty in there and it'll last you a long time. I'll put the link for that down below as well because they really are fantastic. If you are like me and you're just like, uh, you don't want to glue those little intricate pieces because then you've got glue everywhere. And then of course, when you put your piece down, then even more glue is going to ooze out from all over the place, right? Um, well, you don't have to worry about that anymore. If you have your little um, amazing sheets of microscopic glue dots. So again, another super fabulous product that I highly recommend that you try uh, and it'll last you quite a bit. It'll last you a long time. Second to last step is going to be to add the twine for our closure. Now I did forget to add the little mini tab that's sitting there at the desk on my right hand side, but I will come back and add that here in a second once I realize it. Uh, but super easy, just uh, decide you know how much of that twine you want to have and if you want to add a charm in addition to your little tab or if you want to use your tab on the inside and then you know just use charms or something else to dangle on the outside or maybe nothing but as you can see i've created um pockets in the front and back panels we have plenty of paper to journal in we have super interesting little elements that skinnier one again these are all the scraps i simply glued down on top and bottom and now we have a little side tuck on there uh, and then all these great tabs and little pages of interest. Again, you can add so much more, but I typically love uh, having a lot of blank pages just for the purpose of 
being able to uh, to journal in that and I used um, that other faux stitched one as a belly band as you saw there when I inserted the playing card just to show you that I just use it as a belly band so here is our completed little journal done in a snap and of course with lots of character but we do need to come back and add our little um, mini tab so all I'm doing is threading that through remember I had reinforced it um, so it's nice and thick and sturdy and all I'm doing is adding it to the front cover but I hope you guys have enjoyed the project so what did you think what do you think are you ready to try one have you done journals before or is it something that you've kind of put off because you thought oh, that's a whole lot of work all that measuring and cutting and trying to align the holes and I don't know how to do signatures well you no longer have to and even if you are a pro at uh or semi-pro at making journals I hope that this has encouraged you to find a different way to do them super easy in a snap using all the beautiful paper lines that I'm sure you currently own and if not do remember we have tons 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 and tons of amazing paper lines thank you so much for joining us today we hope that you guys have enjoyed the tutorial do give us some feedback we do appreciate your comments very much it helps us to grow in addition don't forget to check out our online stores and join us for our live sales please leave us a thumbs up and we look forward to seeing you in our next video bye have a great day everyone stay creative